Dr. Kelly Mathis. She's a colorectal surgeon at Mayo and has been critical in helping us try to figure out how are we going to uh, work through anal dysplasia since we don't have good guidelines um, from our governing boards. So thank you, Kelly. Good morning, and I'd like to thank the course organizers, Dr. Laughlin in particular, for the invitation. I have no disclosures. Uh, so anal dysplasia was first described by Dr. Bowen in 1912, and we know it's a precursor to anal squamous cell cancer. Uh, anal squamous cell cancer is a rare GI tumor, accounting for only 2% of those that we see. But we do also know that progression from AIN to actual cancer is also rare. And it only occurs in 5 to 10% of dysplastic patients, and it takes decades for that to happen. But the incidence of anal cancer is increasing, both in the general population and particularly in the HIV population. The um, symptoms of anal dysplasia are usually none. These patients are generally asymptomatic. Terminology is important, and it's changed a lot. So if you look at the literature over the last decade, you'll see it described as AIN, anal dysplasia, L-gain, H-gain. There's lots of terms. But the newly adopted terms by College of American Pathology and the AJCC is that we should call this low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion or high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. So LSL and HSIL are kind of the uh, formal terms we should be using. We look at cytology, and we, there are four potential categories in addition to normal. So ASCUS, LSIL, suggestive of HSIL, or frank HSIL. And then we can also do histology from biopsies, and it's considered LSIL when at about 20 to 25 percent of the epithelium is being replaced by these basaloid cells or coilocytes. And if there's more than 50 percent of the uh, epithelium replaced, then it's HSIL. And this is just a sort of visual representation of that spectrum from normal on the left uh, through condyloma and then becoming dysplastic and eventually cancer. Two more graphics that are hard to see, but just to again show that anal cancer is more common in patients with HIV. Um, the first one is just the crude cancer incidence rates and all-cause deaths in patients with HIV infection. And you'll see anal cancer is fourth on the list. Um, and it's hard to point out here, but anal cancer, so there's uh, 60 per, 1, per 100,000 person years in the HIV population versus one out of 100,000 person years in the non-HIV. And then the same on the bottom, HIV-positive men, 46 out of 100,000 HIV-positive men who have 